Welcome to this masterclass and um, yeah, today we're going to talk about the key principles of creating a sustainable diet. And what I want to start with is sort of a thought experiment or an exercise that I want to leave you with. And it's imagining having a diet that's not only healthy, but also easy to maintain. Let's ponder on that for a bit while I move to the next slide. Because it's not as easy as it may seem. And the numbers uh, show that a lot. I um, yeah, collected three uh, research papers and, and the results of that that show that um, yeah, keeping healthy habits or having a sustainable healthy diet uh, yeah, is not as easy as it seems. Uh, and we see that in these three uh, research papers that show that uh, when people started dieting, that uh, in the first paper, 35% of people regained at least five pounds after one year. So that was according to the Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Then 80% of all weight loss was regained by year five, um, was said by a research paper of the medical clinics of North America. And then the last research paper that I found uh, said that 50% of the dieters were 11 pounds over their initial weight after a five-year follow-up. So this shows that uh, if we start dieting, if we start improving our health uh, and trying to create more healthy habits, that it doesn't always work out uh, in our favor. Or, yeah, we even uh, turn over our initial weight. So what we're going to discuss today in this masterclass is why most diets are not sustainable in the long term. I'm going to go over uh, examples uh, also from uh, my own practice, what I see with clients a lot. And then after that, we're going to go over to tools and tips to help you create a diet that works for you. So we're going to look at solutions at the end and then, of course, the Q&A in the end. First, I want to start with what it's not. So what is not the reason of not sticking to your healthy habits and uh, your healthy diet? It's not a lack of willpower. It's not a lack of discipline, like we mostly think. And it's also not that all diets don't work. But then what is the reason? Let's dive into this. So reason number one is focusing on weight, solely on weight. Instead of focusing on the process of gaining healthy habits and the behavior that's attached to reaching a certain outcome or certain goal. And here I have an example uh, or I have examples of, uh, yeah, let's say, uh, not real people. Uh, there are real people in, uh, in my day to day uh, practice, let's say, that I see, but the, uh, the names are, are made up. So Emily, for example, focused on only weight and not on the process. So she overlooked all the healthy habits that she needed to attain to get to her goal weight, let's say. So she forgot that all the things that she, yeah, all the steps that she has to uh, put in uh, to get to that certain result. Well, that is the thing that gets her to that certain result. And then we see Ben who cut out all calories, or not all, but a lot of calories drastically to see results fast. So instead of looking like, hey, what can I change? What kind of behavior can I change um, to get to the goal that I have? Maybe that's X amount of, uh, of kilograms. Um, he just started to cut out calories drastically. Um, and yeah, overlooked, let's say, the, the ongoing habits that he needed to attain. Then reason number two, I see this a lot with uh, clients of mine, and that's an all or nothing thinking approach and also being very judgmental about themselves. So if we look at uh, the example of Lisa, is uh, that she decided to eat healthily and um, not eat any sugars, uh, really strict. And then after she uh, ate one piece of cake, she felt guilty and she completely gave up and was talking down on herself, uh, saying that uh, yeah, she cannot eat healthy, this was not made for her. Uh, yeah, and she just went back to her old habits, thinking that she was the problem and that she was not able to do this. Um, and then, of course, yeah, uh, her approach didn't work and it didn't last. Then we see Tom, who failed to eat 100% healthy. That's uh, the, um, 
the thing that he put up, uh, on himself. It's like, I'm gonna eat 100% healthy for one full week uh, to start off uh, in a good uh, in a good matter. Uh, but yeah, then that didn't work out and he lost motivation right away. It's like, okay, if I cannot do this for one week, 100% healthy, no snacks, no this, no that, um, yeah, then I'm probably not capable of, of doing this at all. And then you get into this negative spiral, uh, which is not helping you to get further. Um, so let's go over to reason number three, which is lack of a supportive environment. I think that a lot of people uh, sometimes overlook this. Uh, th that's why I always ask it like, hey, what does your house look like? Uh, what do your family and friends think of, of your goals? Or how do they act? Uh, what are the people that you surround yourself with the most? Uh, what are the situations that you find yourself in the most? Uh, so if we look at Mila, who is surrounded by unhealthy foods all the time, uh, it's hard for her to stick to her healthy eating habits and to her um, yeah, nutrition uh, pattern because she gets tempted by all these things that are around her all the time. And then David uh, yeah, has an unsupportive partner. So he had the goal to uh, work more on his health, uh, maybe increase some healthy foods. Uh, and then his partner did the complete opposite or uh, maybe even working against his goals. So you can see how this is also not supporting, um, yeah, gaining the, the healthy habits that you want to achieve. I want to let you think about uh, temptations in your environment that make it hard for you to stick to your goals. So this could be situations, uh, but maybe like I said, a, a partner or um, just the, the items in your in your house could be food wise or where things are placed. And please share it in the chat. Uh, maybe other people resonate with it as well. Um, so yeah, think about that for a second. And I already see some people typing, so I think a lot of people are already thinking of how that uh, will apply to them. Exactly, yeah, I see stress as well. This could also be uh, of influence on what it makes hard to stick to your goals. Social activities. So I see a lot of comments coming in. While you are typing, I'm gonna go over to reason number four, and that's a lack of planning. So what we often overlook is like, okay, I set the goal and I'm just going to do it. Uh, but what we forget is that you really need to put things in place to make it work. So for example, Sarah uh, decided, okay, I'm going to eat more vegetables. Uh, but then she didn't prepare them and ended up eating uh, highly processed food and quick snacks anyway. Uh, so what she needed to do was to really set out a plan, how to buy the vegetables, how to prepare them, how to take them and think of all the things that come into play. Same thing for Alex, who didn't do his groceries. So with the best intentions, he started his healthy diet. And then on day one, there was nothing in the fridge. <laughs> so how are you going to stick to your plan if, uh, yeah, if there is no plan uh, and you have nothing set up to make it into a success? Then reason number five, and I see this a lot because this, this is what we're used to uh, with all the diets that we see uh, yeah, coming along and uh, this is good, this is bad, and that's over restriction and over complicating. So let's start with Kim as an example. She followed a very restrictive diet and then she overate afterwards because she felt so restricted. Uh, she was like, okay, now I'm gonna be good all week long. I'm not gonna eat this, I'm not gonna eat that. And then the weekend came and there was maybe a party. I think we all uh, recognize this. Or uh, you sit on the couch and it's like completely deprived of all these nice foods that we can have. And then you eat the whole bag of crisps, maybe also a piece of cake. And yeah, then uh, of course with all or nothing thinking, well, I uh, ruined my diet anyway, so I can also eat that bag of sweets afterwards. What does it all matter, right? And then we see Brian, uh, who got lost in all the nutrition information online. And this touches on the overcomplicating part. Um, looking for the perfect diet, looking for that perfect meal plan that's uh, gonna make it into a success. And then over seeing, overlooking like the basics of nutrition uh, that you could start with to slowly build in those healthy habits that you can sustain for a longer period of time. 
Uh, with the example of Kim, I even found some research where, uh, yeah, that backs this up, is that people who are told not to eat a certain food, let's say chocolate, uh, just a random example, they increase overeating that food by 133%. So we see that if you're going to restrict, eliminate, say like, hey, you cannot have this, what happens? You want it even more. Then reason number six, uh, six, <laughs> six, reason number six, unrealistic uh, expectations. Uh, this is also what I see a lot, of course, otherwise it wouldn't be in this slide. Uh, but people want to see quick results, uh, let's do it fast, uh, then I don't have to put any effort in. But yeah, you're going to pay the price for that because the habits won't stick, because you didn't make an internal change. We see Jan who didn't lose his expected 10 kilograms in one month and then he was like, well, again, all or nothing thinking, uh, if this doesn't work and I did my best, uh, yeah, then I'm going to give up. Or Sophie uh, decided to train hard for one week, five times a week and was expecting the scale to go down, uh, lose some weight. Uh, but yeah, after one week, she saw no significant changes and she gave up. Uh, yeah, this doesn't work for me. I'm not capable. Uh, yeah, I'll just stop doing this. And then reason number seven, really, really important one, lack of individualization. What a word. <laughs> Michael, for example, followed a cookie cutter meal plan that he found on the web. Uh, so he doesn't look has, at this personal situation. It's just like, let me find this meal plan, then it's easy, I can follow it. Uh, but then, yeah, it doesn't work. And what do you do then? Or Nadine, who followed advice from influencers on either TikTok or Instagram. Uh, uh, I think the yeah the famous what I eat in a days. Uh, I think that uh, people recognize this one. Uh, and then uh, Nadine tried to copy that, but of course it didn't work for her because she's from different age, height, um, and so on. Uh, so all uh, other aspects, also lifestyle um, uh, aspects that change her needs. So you cannot follow a one-on-one -on -one um, yeah, advice of an influencer or someone in your surrounding because you are a unique individual. But yeah, now we looked at the main reasons of why most diets don't work, or let's say diet approaches, and you see that it's a lot attached to certain habits and mindset. How can we do it differently? What I want to start off with before I start with the tips and the tools that you can apply to set yourself up for success is that you are the architect of your own life. And this is a really, really important one that I always share with all of my clients is that you know your body better than any other person in the world. So you know how you feel and how you react to a certain type of food. You know how you react to a certain diet. You know if breakfast suits in your lifestyle or not, or that you maybe need to move it a bit forward because you first need to bring the kids to school and you're running around and you don't have time to sit down. Um, or uh, another example, maybe you don't like to eat late at night uh, because it makes you feel full and it interferes with your sleep. But these are things that you need to research for yourself. You can have all the information in the world, all the experts saying uh, yeah, things to you, giving you information, giving you tips, giving you tools like I'm doing today. But in the end, it's you who needs to find out what works for you. So remember that uh, there's strength in getting to know your own body and uh, becoming aware of that. Um, for example, in the group session on intuitive eating, we practice a bit with that. Um, so yeah, maybe I see you in the future there. But remember this and keep this in the back of your mind when I'm starting to tell about the tips and tools that you can apply. So step number one, formulate your why. Also known uh, from the famous book, like start with why. And um, we can also apply this to uh, nutrition, healthy habits, uh, the subject that we're talking about today. Because why do you want a certain result? There's always something behind the thing that you want. So let's take the 10 kilogram weight loss as an example again. You have the goal of losing, losing 10 kilograms. But why is that? Maybe you want to look better. Maybe you want to feel better in your own skin. Uh, maybe you want to have more energy. And those things are the things that keep you motivated and keep the flame burning. Because if it's just about the 10 kilograms, the process that leads to it is what is what's going to get you there. 
and also the type of person that you have to become to get to that result and also stick with that result because the result is not the end goal. Eventually you have to be that person and stay that person to stick with that result. So it's always better to look at why do I find this so important? And you can explore that from looking at your values. What do you find important in life? Maybe you are a uh, mom and you lack energy to play with your kids. So it's not about the 10 kilograms. It's about gaining more energy. And maybe the 10 kilograms and uh, carrying around uh, less weight on your body is giving you more energy. But then if you look deeper, so the deeper motivation is that you want to play with your kids. You want to grow old to see your kids growing old. But it could also be that you want to um, uh, be a high achiever or in the gym, uh, get to some nice goals and, and uh, see progress. So you need to have a good diet for that. First, look at your why and then start creating the plan and really visualize the person that you want to be. Because eventually it's you who is changing that will get to that certain result and then stick to it. But there has to change, uh, something has to change internally in your behavior, in who you are. So I want you to ponder on this uh, question is to think about your why and why it is so important to you. So if you think maybe you have a goal now in mind, health goal, nutrition goal, um, and then dive a bit deeper in why is it so important to you? And I see a lot of uh, reactions already coming in the chat. Um, yeah, amazing to see that. And indeed, listen to yourself. Uh, we are really, um, yeah, the architects of our own life. Like I said, you know yourself best. Then step two, set realistic goals. So identify the areas that you need to improve and then set goals on top of that. Uh, so look at each area like, hey, uh, maybe I need to improve something in my diet. Maybe it's an exercise. Like today we're talking about diet, but of course it's always uh, multifaceted. So um, if you make your goals, it can be different layers. And you can do that uh, with the help of making SMART goals, your goals SMART. And SMART stands for specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. And at the end of the session, uh, we've also created a handout to practice with this so that you can put your goals nice in this template. And then you really have, um, yeah, have it clear for yourself, like, what do I need to work on? Uh, so that makes it uh, yeah, more easy to create a successful diet and, and plan. And then stay away from trends and fat diets. Uh, we see everything coming around, keto, intermittent fasting, high carb, low carb, carnivore, <laughs> name it. Um, but try to find something for yourself and just start with one approach. There's no one size fits all. It's not black and white in nutrition, but really again, see what works for you. But usually when we see trends rise, it's only there for a few months or years, let's say. And yeah, the basics in nutrition are mostly leading and then seeing what works for you. Maybe you're a person who likes high protein, high carb in the morning. Maybe you're more high fat, high protein in the morning. It differs per person and you will have to yeah, find that out. And focus on one thing at a time. So if you've made your goals list, uh, maybe you want to improve different areas of nutrition, then don't do it all at once, but start slow. Maybe you want to Im uh, improve your fruit intake. So start with adding one fruit a day. And then if that works, next week you're going to add one extra fruit. And then next week you're going to add another type of vegetable and then work from there. And then eventually it will become part of yourself and you don't have to think about it anymore. So now it's time for a poll. Uh, what is the most important area for you to work on in your diet? I put on uh, four examples, maybe uh, they don't apply to you, but I try to uh, choose the ones that I see uh, the most in my, uh, in my daily practice. Um, if you don't see uh, one that you want to work on, maybe it's nice to put it in the chat, maybe other people resonate with it. Uh, I see a lot of people saying improving meal planning. That's a good one. Boosting vegetable intake. Yeah, so I think everyone has one of the list. Really nice to see. So we have some goals to work on after this masterclass. Then, if you know what you need to work on, you need to set up a plan. So identify all the resources that you need. Um, what do you need? A grocery list. You need to um, maybe clean out your kitchen, 
You maybe need to learn a new skill. Maybe you don't know how to cook or how to cook fast recipes. So you need to research that first. So look at all the things, all the items, uh, might be physical, might be a skill, that you need to work on this goal. And then you're going to apply it. And this really helps with setting an implementation intention. This is a really simple method. Uh, I don't know from which year it is, but it has been in the, in the realm of psychology for, for years and years. And how you're going to do this is applying an if-then sentence. So for example, if I come home from work, I eat an apple, then I eat an apple. Or if I sit on the couch, I drink a cup of tea, or then I drink a cup of tea. So you're going to apply that with all the goals that you have. And then there's no, no doubt anymore. It's like, if I do this, then I do that. So you take out the the thought process and the decision fatigue that we often experience of like having to make all these decisions all day long and then eventually you are drained at the end of the day uh, and let's say that decision battery like I always call it is empty and then you're in the supermarket without a plan and it's like uh, okay what now uh, so it helps to to set up uh, this plan and those implementation intentions uh, habit stacking is a is yeah uh, sort of the same thing. So you're gonna look at a habit that you already do. So you brush your teeth every day, I hope, and then you're gonna attach something to that. So if I've brushed my teeth, uh, I will make a smoothie for myself. So always when you make, uh, always when you end uh, brushing your teeth, then you make a smoothie. So then there's no doubt on when you're gonna do it, how you're gonna do it. It's just it's set in stone. Then with uh, yeah, setting a plan and making your goal, think of all the aspects. So how you're gonna do it, when you're gonna do it, where you're gonna do it, what are you gonna do? So then you can ask for like, okay, uh, all these aspects that you need to make it into a success. So you can go into detail as much as possible. Then you have all these variables already set out. Uh, yeah, and all the choices already made. Then step number four. Cultivate a growth mindset. And uh, I almost want to say like, oh, this is the most important one, but I think all of them are equally uh, important. Um, this touches on the judgmental self-talk and the all or nothing thinking. Uh, this is usually uh, where I see the clients that don't have success, uh, yeah, that they lack success because of this, uh, because they think all or nothing. And the people that I see thriving, clients that I see thriving in my practice, they practice self-compassion, they are curious, they learn from their actions, they're gonna sit down maybe daily, maybe weekly on like, hmm, why did I did a certain thing? Uh, how can I do that better next time? Instead of, oh, okay, I ate cake again and I wasn't allowed and uh, yeah, I, I cannot do this, uh, this is not for me, uh, I'm so stupid, like I, I hear the most horrible things that people say to themselves and um, you can see it in my whole body language, like this is not working. And that also doesn't help you to, yeah, to achieve success and to uh, create a healthy lifestyle. Health is also about being positive and being self-compassionate. So really be flexible in your approach. Try one thing out for one, two, three, four weeks. See if it works. If it doesn't, there's a reason for it. Discover that reason and then readjust your approach. Um, I wanted to say simple as that, but of course it's not simple, but it's really a practice that you need to um, yeah, apply over and over again uh, to get better at this. Um, and I always say like, be curious. So just ask yourself like, hmm, what is the reason I did this? And how, how can I do this differently? Because that is how you would talk to a friend, for example, when something happens, you're like, oh, but why did that happen? So try to speak to yourself uh, like that as well or build in exploration phases. Like I said, you try one thing out, if it doesn't work, you adjust and so on until you find the right approach for you. Then step number five, creating a healthy environment. We touched on it a little bit uh, before already when I asked like, what can you uh, uh, change in your environment? So really look for health promoting uh, situations for inspiring people that uh, go for the same goals as you, that have the same values that they want to uh, work on. And search for a healthy physical environment. If you don't have that at home, maybe it's in a gym, uh, maybe it's outside, uh, there's enough things uh, to explore. And if you don't have that, 
um, because I understand that this is not for everybody. Uh, maybe you don't have a supportive partner. Maybe you don't have supportive friends yet or uh, people around you that all think differently or uh, yeah, maybe even uh, yeah, with the peer pressure of like, oh, yeah, no, come and uh, oh, you're being so boring, eating healthy or like I hear this a lot. Um, I don't say cut all those people off, but try to find surrounding situations and people that inspire you and that help you achieve your goals that you want to achieve. Uh, maybe you can go to a cooking workshop. Maybe you can find another gym uh, that you feel better at. Uh, maybe you can create new friendships. Uh, really explore what works well for you. So I want to ask you in terms of uh, yeah, environment to think of an aspect in your home uh, that you could change right now so that it um, yeah, so that it helps you more, so that it improves your healthy habits and that they become more obvious because we want to make it obvious to support our uh, healthy habits or eating habits. Um, you can put this in the chat. I'm really curious if you can already come up with some things. Maybe it's um, yeah, the, how you put your condiments in the, in the closet, like in the cupboards. Uh, maybe it's how you arrange the fruits on the table in the living room or maybe unhealthy foods that you can uh, take away from the, from the table. So I'm giving just some random examples here, but it could be anything. could also um, yeah, be, let's, let's say, the, the vibe in your house is not really promoting healthy behavior. So yeah, think about that. And while you ponder on this, I see a lot of answers already coming in. I go on to step number six, and that's keeping it simple. So like I said, often people overcomplicate it, um, overcomplicate their diet, overcomplicate healthy habits. Um, and in terms of nutrition, I always say focus on adding instead of eliminating. So instead of looking at, okay, how can I reduce my chocolate intake or eat as little sugar as possible? It's like, okay, if your goal is to eat more fruits, start with that. And then you will see that eventually uh, maybe your sugar cravings go down naturally because you're having more natural sugars that you give yourself and you're more satiated because of all the fiber in the fruits. And also look at the fundamentals of healthy nutrition. There's a lot of contradicting information online, but there are some basic fundamentals that yeah work for everybody. Uh, we have this nice bundled in a course on, the, on Open Up as well, the fundamentals of a healthy diet, uh, yeah, where I go into all these topics. And it also speaks on the 80-20 rule that I uh, always yeah, give as a guideline. It's like you don't have to be 100% healthy. That's almost impossible. We're in this fast-paced world where nutrition is everywhere, unhealthy snacks are everywhere, temptations are everywhere. Uh, so expecting from yourself to be 100% healthy um, yeah, is unrealistic. 80% whole foods, minimally processed, fresh, and 20% whatever you want. So to your liking. Maybe it's that piece of cake at a birthday. Maybe it's a pizza on Saturday night. F try to find the balance uh, in your nutrition and not to be so um, yeah, rigid and uh, restrictive because we see uh, what happens if we do that. And look at the bigger picture. So when I'm saying 80-20, it's not that you have to be perfect every day, like, oh, I have to be 80% healthy, 20% uh, I can uh, do a bit of what I want. But look at weeks, at months, at a year. So again, tiny steps um, and build from there. Then the last one, step seven, is celebrating your successes. We often overlook this one. Uh, because we have this main goal, uh, usually, like I said, um, let's go back to that example of losing 10 kilograms. It's like, okay, if I get to that goal, then I achieved it, then I can be happy. But what do you need to do to get to losing that 10 kilograms? Again, what are all the steps that you need to take? If you gained, let's say, um, eating more fruits, and let's say two fruits a day, from going from zero to two, that's already a win. That's already something that you can tick off, um, yeah, off your list. And really, um, yeah, try to keep a success journal, for example, uh, or talk about it with other people. Uh, different tools apply to different people. I really like to uh, write down how I feel and what I've achieved to see like, hey, okay, if I have a down moment, okay, but I came this far. Like first I was doing this, now I'm doing this. So you can see the progress 
that you're making. And it's not like, okay, maybe you don't see the change on the skill, but maybe you added 10 minutes of walking every day. Maybe you added the, those fruits. Maybe you cleaned out your kitchen and you made your environment more health promoting. Those are all small wins that will get you to your goal. You can also plan in reflection moments to think about this. Uh, and then I say make it really an appointment with yourself. So put it in your agenda <laughs> reflection moment. Uh, like I said before, planning really um, helps with making it into a success and not leaving it up for, for choice, let's say, um, or coincidence. If you plan it out, there's more guarantee that you will finally do it. Then to summarize, uh, we are already at the end of the masterclass, so uh, I hope that you've all learned something from this. Uh, maybe you already know your why. Uh, maybe there are other uh, yeah, parts where you can step in. Um, but I hope that uh, everybody finds something uh, to work on uh, today. So on the left, we see the unsustainable approach. On the right, the sustainable approach. And of course, uh, this masterclass has been recorded. So you can always get back to the masterclass because, yeah, I've uh, talked about a lot of topics and to-dos and things to, to think of. So it's a nice one to, to get back to and, uh, and practice with this. Then we have uh, a handout for the smart goal setting and, and planning. Uh, I made a template and an example on how to do this uh, so that you can practice with this at home. Um, uh, so you will see that in the, yeah, I see it in the chat already. There you know where you can find the handout. Um, yeah, then I want to thank you for uh, listening and watching to the masterclass right now. And in a short while, we will uh, go over to the q and I'm really curious with what questions you came up. So see you in a bit. Yeah, Rose, thank you so much for uh, for this masterclass. I was uh, watching it from the sidelines and I saw the chat going crazy with people <laughs> yes, recognizing things and also, yeah, having all sorts of issues, uh, uh, yeah, with with food. So I think it's a very hot topic yeah, at, the, at the moment. <laughs> I think it will always be. So uh, I'm curious yeah. about the questions. That yeah, yeah, we had a, we had a lot of, a lot come in. Um, so uh, Ned, well, we're gonna do our best to answer um, uh, as many as we can. Um, we're gonna start with the most popular ones, or at least those. Uh, those will be answered. Um, starting with the first uh, by Lily, which is what about restricting the time of eating? Uh, so for instance, intermittent fasting, um, what is the research on that? Uh, she also asked really what the research is on that. Uh, that's uh, the second question. Oh, the of, second question. Uh, okay. But also, what, what about restricting so, okay. the time of what eating? What about? Yeah, it's quite, kind of a broad question. But if I look at, um, let's say, the masterclass that I that I did today, um, it's just one approach. So it's it's one tool that you can apply. Uh, really look at yeah the goal that you want to achieve. For some people, it's uh, they try intermittent fasting or restrictive eating because of the yeah the health uh, claims that are. Um, that are attached to it. Others do it to reduce their calorie intake uh, because they have lesser time to eat in a day. Um, so yeah, then they of course eat less uh, if you apply it well, because uh, I've also seen people applying intermittent fasting and then still overeating in that eating window. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you apply it, you have to see how you apply it and uh, yeah, what kind of goal uh, is attached to it, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. For some people it works, for other people it, uh, it doesn't. So that's really something that you need to try out for a while to see if it if it works for you mm. there and then the research um there is a lot of upcoming research on this topic, of course, on, on intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, uh, yeah, that it sup uh, supports gut health. Um, yeah, there's a lot to find on it. Uh, still long-term studies, of course, need it uh, and a lot of replication. I think it's really promising, um, but in general, I try to look at the individual if mm. it fits to the lifestyle, because for some people... Yeah, it just really doesn't work. Uh, yeah, and then it's better to apply something that does work and that you can sustain because that's the, the main mm. idea. The, the healthiest diet is the diet that you can sustain for a long time and that's promoting your health goals. Yeah, yeah. so it's not either good or either bad. It just depends on what you want to achieve, what your yeah. lifestyle is like. Yeah, so you have to see if it, applies, yeah. if it applies to you. Mm. Yeah, makes sense, makes <laughs> sense. And we'll move on to the second question, which is by Lisa. Um, and she asks... Any tips on how to deal with cravings when we are changing our diets? Very good question. Mm, yeah, <laughs> Very curious is, about this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cravings. Okay, I, I'm going to answer this from a perspective what I uh, usually see with clients the most. And that's that their, balanced, uh, their meals are not well balanced uh, and not well structured. 
uh, but mostly not well balanced because even sometimes people think that they eat healthy, but then the portion of protein is too little. They are lacking fiber. Um, they only have, let's say, two macronutrients in a uh, in a meal. And if they would maybe combine all four of them, or let's say three, so protein, um, carbohydrates, fats, and then under carbohydrates, there is fiber. Uh, then you have a more balanced meal. Uh, and then you also are satiated for longer. So the cravings naturally go down. That's what I see in clients a lot, focusing mm-hmm. on the main balanced meals. So usually that's three main meals, sometimes four. I think a lot of people recognize that three or four o'clock moment where they're mm-hmm. like, oh, that's hard. <laughs> yes. And yeah, I see with a lot of people, if if I'm balancing their, their meals better, the breakfast and the lunch, sometimes the cravings are completely gone at three or four. Okay. And then if they still have them, then we just look at a healthy snack option at that moment to just yeah cover, let's say, that period to dinner time but we're so used to having that thought of like oh i can only eat three times a day or i have to eat six times a day we're like so stuck with these certain rules um and sometimes the solution is just eating four times a day Mm -hmm. and seeing it as a complete meal for example and then the Mm -hmm. cravings go down that's usually yeah lack of structure lack of uh balanced meals yeah so both the things like what you're actually eating and and yeah and how you uh, plan that out in a day yeah makes sense (laughs) Then we're going on to the third question. I hope I pronounce this co- correctly, but it's by uh, Antonello. Um, and he's saying, how do I know what's best to eat um, in each situation? Like if I need to focus uh, on work or if I need energy for a short exercise, for instance, weightlifting uh, or a longer one, uh, cycling, for instance. Mm, yeah, this is really specific diet advice. I can answer it really shortly, but I would still recommend like if you want that uh, personalized advice to uh, yeah have a one-on-one session uh, mm-hmm. either at open up or outside of open up with a nutritional expert or dietitian um, usually what we aim for in a in a normal day let's say so let's say without exercise uh, is just having those like i said balanced meals um, spread out over the day with even time uh, in between and you can do this either time restricted feeding or a bigger window um, and usually with exercise, so either endurance, either strength training, you try to have carbohydrates before and after the training. And of course, with endurance, that's higher, higher carbohydrates. Uh, mm-hmm. And with strength training, actually also with endurance, but then the protein amounts are a bit lower. But I would say carbohydrates, protein before every exercise, either it being endurance or strength. And then Afterwards, you can just have a full combination of carbohydrates, uh, protein and fats. Why am I not saying fats before? It's because it can sometimes interfere with your training. Uh, become, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's too heavy. Uh, and yeah, especially with endurance training, if you eat too high fiber before a workout, it can cause some digestive complaints or intestinal complaints. But mm-hmm. I've heard different stories from different clients. Like some people just eat their whole wheat bread or, or yeah, uh, wild rice before and they, and vegetables maybe even, and they don't have any complaints. And others I really put like on simple carbs, like white rice, rice or white bread before they have a long training so yeah this i can talk about this for hours yeah, but i hope I that, can, <laughs> that this short answer helps a bit i can imagine because what are good foods in general that have a lot of carbohydrates because i heard you mention that multiple times uh, our, yeah so rice potatoes bread uh but could also be like quinoa or bulgur like the the lesser known and of course fruits mm-hmm. uh fruits usually contain uh more sugar uh so that's taken up a bit uh quicker let's say than uh yeah than the com- complex carbohydrates that we usually advise to keep satiated because they have more fiber. But in some cases, uh, if someone experiences, let's say, intestinal complaints with training or they want quick energy, then, of course, you're going to give them more simple carbohydrates to get that energy up quick. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really really personal. personal, But, yeah, these are a bit the general guidelines, let's say. Yeah, thanks for for sharing those. Um, Yeah, at least it gives a baseline of uh, of where to start. Something to start with. Uh, we're going to go on to the fourth question, which is by Anna. And she says, uh, do you have more tips on uh, vegetable proteins? Are beans, peas, tofu, etc. really sufficient? Yeah, so uh, 
vegetarian or vegan op protein options, uh, I would always aim for the less, le least processed uh, types of food. So we, what I see a lot is that we aim for those uh, processed types, uh, burgers, schnitzels, uh, whatever <laughs> there is around. Mm -hmm. But that's usually highly processed, a lot of salt, a lot of fat added when not needed. And then it's mm -hmm. not like the healthy fats, but um, let's say a lot of sunflower, of sunflower oil, mm -hmm. uh, seed oils, which are not inherently bad, but I would would rather focus on having a good olive oil, uh, maybe some grass-fed uh, pure butter, let's say, um, and use that as your fat sources instead of it being already in processed foods. And then you have tofu, tempeh, seitan, which is made from wheat gluten. Mm. Um, and you have, of course, legumes, which are uh, really high in protein. What I see a lot is that people uh, promote nuts as high protein, uh, but you would have to eat a lot of nuts to get to uh, mm -hmm. yeah a certain type yeah a certain amount of protein. Like 100 grams of nuts is 600 calories, and you get 20 grams of protein. But then you have to eat a lot of calories to get to that amount. So I would say for your protein, focus on those unprocessed foods. Mm -hmm. You have some. Uh, let's say Greek yogurt type of, or quark like uh, substitutes now from all pro, let's say, but always mm -hmm. try to find then the unsweetened ones. Uh, yeah, with lesser additives, let's say. And mm -hmm. in terms of plant based milk, I would always say uh, soy milk and then unsweetened because okay. oat and rice and, and um, nut milks, yeah, they don't contain any protein. Um, it's mm -hmm. just water with <laughs> a little bit of oats, let's say. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but these things are good to know because there are so many options available right now, especially there since is. being vegetarian and vegan is yeah. Is, yeah but same as when common. you're not a vegetarian or a vegan, always look at what grows on a tree, what comes from the ground, and what has like let's say a single ingredient. So tofu is a single ingredient, tempeh mm. is a single ingredient, uh, and so th so that of course are the most healthy options. And then you can put herbs and spices and a healthy fat to it to prepare it. Uh, but I would say the 20% yeah. that I talked about, so the 80-20, the 20% is all those uh, yeah, processed burgers and, and substitutes for meat. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, yeah, that's marketing-wise, of course, that people are going to eat that faster yeah. than trying to pr learn how to prepare, let's say, a good tempeh or a good tofu. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, you have a lot to choose from. Um, and I hope yeah. this this helps a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a nice advice. Like think think like a farmer almost. Like what comes exactly. out of the ground, what exactly. it grows on the trees and uh, go into that. <laughs> Um, we're already uh, on to the last question. Uh, time is, is flying by. Yeah, um, so we're going to uh, go into the, the fifth question of Sandra, which is, um, what is your opinion on food tracking? Um, yeah, again, maybe I'm going to sound a bit uh, like I'm repeating myself, but it's super personal. Uh, yeah. I'm always a bit, um, how do I say it, cautious with this. Uh, I really look at the in individual that I have in front of me. Food tracking can be really beneficial, but it can also go the wrong way that you become way too obsessive uh, mm. with it. I really think it's an amazing tool to make people more aware of what is in our nutrition. So when I apply it in my consultations, I usually say like, okay, you're gonna track your food really precisely for two weeks, but also look at it just as data. Mm -hmm. and trying to learn something from it. So, okay, what if I uh, add this pizza and like, whoa, okay, that's 1,200 calories. Okay, but what happens if you make a healthy meal and how many calories is that? How is the yeah. protein and fiber and, and carbohydrate ratio? Like, okay, and how does this make me feel? So um, there's a lot more around it than just tracking and saying, oh, this many calories. And But it needs some explanation and yeah. some guidance. Like if, if you just do it, uh, randomly and you don't really know what to look at, uh, yeah, then it can go the wrong way. Uh, but if you have someone who, yeah, uh, gives you the right information, guides you in there, reflects on it, like, hey, okay, what did you learn from this? Uh, is mm -hmm. there something that you don't understand? Uh, and it's also a skill. <laughs> yeah. I see a lot of people who start doing it and they think like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm already hitting my calories, but then they uh, sometimes overestimate it or they scan the wrong product. The other way around it can be that they underestimate it and mm -hmm. they say like, yeah, I'm really, I'm only eating 1300 calories. And I actually have a good example of this, of a client from last week. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, he put in one spoon, like 10 grams of, of quark, for example. And now this is not an unhealthy food, so there was not a lot of damage, let's say. But he actually ate 250 grams. So oh. he just scanned it <laughs> and he took the first option yeah. from the app. But 
yeah, was completely wrong. But yeah. it can also be with, let's say, if you're using oil that you think like, oh, this, this maybe fine. this is like five grams and then it turns out to be 30 grams. Or I see that a lot with nuts. Like, oh, that must be one handful. And then it's actually 50 grams instead mm. of 25. And that doubles the calories. And then if your goal is, for example, to lose weight, it can be like, yeah, but I'm eating so little and I don't get it. So, mm. yeah, you really need some some good guidance with that to make yeah. it work. It yeah. can be really valuable, but yeah. with, with caution. Yeah. No, I like the separation that you, the distinction that you made also between like looking at what your intention is. So use it yeah. really to gain awareness and yeah, create, you know, like get some data for yourself to, yeah, to progress, but also not to use it as a way to like judge yourself or like be, yeah. Be exactly. Because at a certain moment you want to get rid of that approach, right? Mm-hmm. You just yeah. want to l- use it as a tool to gain knowledge and then you know like okay at a certain point you're good at estimating like okay this this product has this amount of uh protein oh but i'm craving carbs and you read the label and you already do it some some kind of in your head and then even that after a really long time fades let's say Mm -hmm. in in my journey uh, i used to track for six seven years uh, and eventually i was so done with it because it's not a way to live to put your food in every time um so i tried to drop it and yeah, focus more on intuition and intuitive style of eating because I, I knew what was in the food. Yeah. Um, and yeah, don't uh, track your food for seven years <laughs> unless it's really for a sort of, uh, yeah. uh, let's say, pr- professional purpose for uh, sports, like training goals. Uh, but yeah, now let's say as a recreational um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, sports person or, or lifter, let's say, uh, strength training, you don't need to be that exact. Uh, Mm -hmm. in the beginning maybe uh, but then eventually I try to work with my clients towards a more intuitive Mm -hmm. eating style and working with the knowledge that they've gained from it once the habits are established and to work on those exactly not just on tracking yeah Yeah. and again knowledge 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 (laughs) education uh, yeah knowing what you're doing and 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 um yeah what the products say and how they yeah how you respond to that let's say with your body yeah yeah, Rose, thank you so much for uh, for all the information that uh, that you shared today. Um, for everyone watching, um, if you want to know more about this, um, you're always welcome to book a, a one-on-one session with Rose or one of one of the other uh, lifestyle experts um, from Open Up. Because as you've heard, a lot of it is very personal, so I can also imagine that uh, you want to talk about uh, your own stuff. Um, other than that, there's also group sessions that uh, that are a nice introductory uh, yeah, way to get uh, get started on this. Um, and also don't forget to look at the handouts that are included here in this masterclass to, um, yeah, to give yourself a, a head start. Um, I'm going to wish you all uh, yeah, a very uh, uh, happy rest of the day. And thanks again, Rose, uh, uh, for sharing. Yeah, thank <laughs> you too. And thanks for watching uh, and maybe see you in the future. <laughs>